kingdom work illustrated. Not only did Jesus and his disciples preach about the kingdom and teach about it in parables, but the mighty works which Jesus did were intended to foreshadow the still greater work to be accomplished by his kingdom during his millennial reign. This is intimated by the words, These things did Jesus and manifested forth his glory. In other words, the works of Jesus were four gleams of the work of his glorious kingdom. Many of his mighty works were done on the Sabbath for the same reason. As the six days of the week represent toil and travail, the result of sin, so the seventh day represents the millennium, the rest of the people of God, secured to all who accept it through the merit of Christ's sacrifice. The turning of water into wine represented how the plain things of the present time, the simplicity of present truth, will yet be transmuted by the Lord into the joys of the kingdom at the marriage feast in glory. The cleansing of the lepers represented cleansing from the leprosy of sin. The one who returned to give glory to God represents the fact that only a little flock appreciates the favor of sin forgiven during this age. The healing of the sick represented the great fact that all diseases, mental, moral, physical, will be healed by Messiah, the good physician, royal priest, typed by Melchizedek. The opening of the blind eyes and of the deaf ears represented the greater fact that in due time the eyes and ears of understanding of all mankind will be opened and God's glory will be appreciated. All flesh shall see it together. Our Lord's transfiguration on the mount was another illustration of the kingdom. His disciples knew not whether it was a reality or a vision until Jesus said, Tell the vision to no man until the Son of Man be risen from the dead. Later, St. Peter declared that what they saw in the Holy Mount represented Messiah's kingdom. Uh-huh.